Viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Please, is there anything I can do, sir? Please. Don't do this to my wife, man. You don't know what you're doing to my family, man. Please. I'm begging you. I'm literally begging Where am I going to put my feet? Sir, I'm begging you. Please. 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 Some time has come. Something happened that I never thought would happen, to be quite honest. Farther troll. Meow. 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 Then it's going to be one in the wind column. One for the highlight reel, and one for the bad guy. There you go. You're going to have to say you're sorry or you're going to jail. I promise. <laughs> they refused to help me while I was in Logan County Jail and paid my bond. I think you need help in this way. You need to be what kind of help? Put in a straight jacket and take it to a loony bin. I retire as an auditor, so I'm officially done. But I'm the new honey boo boo of auditing. <laughs> and I told my fiance, and he just started busting out laughing. And I'm like, dude, that's not funny. That's not cool. I'm not the honey boo boo of auditing, dude. I'm not trailer trash. In today's video, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be audio only, where we're going to be listening to Chili on a phone call talking to somebody i don't know who it is he's talking to but he's talking about how the prison is the morale of the prison how the prison guards treat the inmates he's just going on a crying spree because he has to spend 180 days in prison well you know what chili if you kept your mouth shut and you acted respectful in that courtroom i guarantee you wouldn't be there right now but anyways enjoy the show to Team DLZ. Today is Sunday, March 24th, 2024. This is officially my fifth day in jail. There she is. Ooh. She pretty. Look, she got pretty little shoes on. Give me shoes, baby. Come on now. You heard me? Give my shoes that good little bitch. I'm not gonna lie. He sounds so depressed and so demoralized it's great isn't it it couldn't happen to a better better person you know what you know what too bad it wasn't booger mcgee that'd be even better seeing little chrissy in, on the phone crying wouldn't that be great and what is he doing in prison there's yard time and all this other nonsense he should be having a good time taxpayers are paying for him to live and he doesn't have to worry about living in his van i want to explain to you how this place works a little bit so when I was intaked from the courtroom into the jail, they put me in the torture cuff. <laughs> and the bailiff, who I had called the pig, put the torture cuffs on nice and tight. And you look at the room that's dark oak and black, and there's black robes, and deep red overtones in the room. And ironically, just less than 40 feet away, there's a door that leads to the dungeon. Come on, Chili. All you had to do was whip out your trifold and that, that judge would have folded like a cheap suit. And when they open the door, it's all white with a stripe that goes around the room and the room's 12 feet by eight feet deep and they put you in there in the torture cuffs and they shut the door. You look around and there's nothing there but you. And then maybe a minute later, the two bailiffs came in and immediately began to pat me down briskly as though they were giving me a terrible massage from my ankles up to the top of my hair. Their hands are- Chili, that's called a pat down. That means when they pat you down, they're searching for any kind of contraband you're not supposed to have on you or anything that you have on you that could could be dangerous or cause an issue in the prison. Because if you bring something in that's illegal, say you you smuggle like like some kind of a pipe that you would smoke certain things with in your prison purse, that's an ad additional charge for you. And I'm just saying that as an example. I'm not saying you actually did that. I mean, who knows what you put in your prison purse? coursing over my body and they're feeling every single inch of my pants, my suit jacket, they begin to crumple it and 
pull on it and twist it because I'm already in the torture cuffs and they're tight. And I tell them, please, the torture cuffs are, t- are tight. We don't have to like each other, but you don't have to torture me. And he says, you'll be out of them in a minute. And then he says, I'm going to bring your lawyer in. They leave as quickly as they came in. And then the lawyer comes in and Michael Me, his face is red and he's disoriented. And I look at him and I actually say to him, are you okay? He says, I'm, I'm okay. And I look at him and I say, what, what happens now? How do, how do we get me out of here? And he said, I'll file an appeal with the district court. And then I said, how long, Michael? Oh, don't worry, Chili. You're not going to get out of tossing a salad. You're going to have to wait for that appeal to go through. And you're going to be there for several days, maybe several weeks, until they can do that appeal process. Until then, you know what you're going to be doing. Let's roll that clip. First of all, right, if he's a newcomer, right, I want him to suck my ass and jump. What they call toss the salad. That's the slang word, toss the salad. It means sucking my ass, right? With jelly or without jelly. Some people use syrup. I prefer a guy to use jelly, right? I will reach my climate, right? I will automatically get hard, right? I will, you know, come automatically if he's sucking my ass for about 10 minutes or longer. It'll take two weeks. So I'm going through shock and at the same time. Then the two bailiffs come in and say, what do you want us to do with your phones? And I said, I don't know. And then I said, just give them to my lawyer. So my lawyer takes my phones, and then they take me down a corridor that no one has access to. The walls still have, like, the house being built where there's still paste and covering of the nails with the stucco. And they take me down the hallway, and then I'm in the dungeon. And as soon as I enter into the dungeon, it's this, there's, you know, hundreds of people there, and there's half of them or more are people in these these shackles, they're in chains. They got a chain around their waist, a chain, a torture cuffs on each wrist, and the, the shackles are attached to the chain. And then you. With Chili's great imagination, he should write some books calling a holding cell a dungeon. They walk me through and they say, let's, let's switch him up. So then they bring me over and they take the torture cuffs off. They say, take off your jacket. I take off my jacket. And then they say, all right, take off your shoes. I take off my shoes, one shoe, one sock. And then they, they take a flashlight and they look at my feet and they roll my pant leg up. And then they they take me from there and they now they say, take off your overshirt and just wear your, wear your overshirt. Get rid of your white t-shirt because it's going to be cold. Oh, don't worry, Chili. You're not going to be cold at all. Definitely at nighttime, you will not be cold. Bubba's going to take extra, extra care of you. And so then they... I take off both shirts and then I put the button on, the white button up. My, my suit pants are fairly new, so is my shirt's brand new. And so then I'm just wearing orange, like water shoes. And then I'm wearing my slacks and my button up white dress shirt. And then they take me over to medical and uh, they take my blood pressure. And my blood pressure is 170 over 110. And she says, Well, do you have high blood pressure? And I say, I, I used to. I took care of it. I said, Isn't that pretty high? And she said, It's not so high understanding the circumstances and then I I say understanding the circumstances she says, yeah in the situation that you're in now it's 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 expected your blood pressure is going to be a little high and I said but isn't that really high don't worry chili if something happens to you we're not gonna care just like this guy something happened to him and we don't give a rat's behind about him she said you'll be okay and then they take me from there in shackles and they sit me down on a bench and then they shackle me into a chair and then I have to sit in this chair and then I look over to the other people and I say, hey, was your blood pressure high? And they say, yeah. And I said, did she say to you, it's, it's, and I ask multiple people and they say, yes. And then I go into a holding cell and I'm in this holding cell. I get in there maybe around three or four o'clock and I'm in this holding tank until four o'clock in the morning. You can't, you, you can lay down, but it's freezing, freezing cold. Come on, what do you think? You're in a high-class hotel? You're in jail. Jail is not supposed to be nice or pretty. It's supposed to be a place where you reform. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't reform in prison. And so then I'm in the holding cell for 12, 15 hours. I don't know how long. And then they say, you're transferred upstairs. And I go upstairs. And now this is a room. It's a big room, like a big auditorium room. There's There's stainless steel tables in the middle with stainless steel stools go around them and there's probably four of them and there's you know six or eight stools at each table so there's you know maybe 50 people considered these four tables and around the room are doors i don't know where those doors lead so now at this point i have to take off all my clothes drop them into a bag and then walk into the shower area 
and I go into the shower. Oh my God, that's so gross. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine what those officers had to witness seeing Chili take off his clothes to go to the shower? Oh God, I'm just having, oh, I'm, I'm getting chills just thinking of that. And the guard tells me, go in there and shower, drop all your clothes outside, put them in a the bag. And so I do that. We don't put them in bags until I go in the shower. And then they come around, they take the bag, so you're buck naked in the shower. I'm starting to feel funny. Well, I feel fine. I guess I'm going to be... And then I take a shower. And then the guard comes around. He says, all right, open your mouth. I open my mouth. He says, all right, turn around, spread your butt cheeks, squat, and cough. I don't. I just turned around, tap the butt sides of my butt cheeks, and, <laughs> and the guard was about... 70 and he's like good enough and then uh i come out they give me a pair of these so i'm wearing the exact same clothes that i would put on tuesday night or wednesday morning then this is called isolation for 24 to 48 hours it's rooms of one or two people for me it's going to be two how dare that warden do that to you how dare he i think i'm going to write to my congressman and tell him that he has to contact the governor and put the governor in his place how dare that prison put you with another inmate, a, co a constitutional law scholar, in with another inmate. How dare that prison? I think everybody that's watching this video should write to their congressman or congresswoman and file a complaint. And so I, I go to this, he says, your name, DeCastro, inmate number. I now have it memorized, 1669561. And then I go, and he says, you and you go to room number 37. I'm walking to the room, and the guy next to me passes me. And I think, I guess he's in a hurry to get to the room. We walk into the room. He goes to the two bunks. He grabs the two mattresses, looks at them, picks the mattress he wants, puts it on the bottom bunk, and then throws the other one on the upper bunk, then takes the sheets we got and the blanket, quickly makes himself a bed, gets in the bed, and puts the covers over his head. Chili, didn't you know prisons and jails? They're not fine, outstanding citizens that go into that. They're law-breaking individuals. They don't care about you. They're all about themselves. They'll string you up and slit your throat ear to ear over a stupid candy wrapper. They don't give a rat's behind what you do or who you are. It was kind of like a surreal moment. I was like, all right. So then I said, hey, man, I'm chilly. Nice to meet you. He said, Nick, I said, man, this is hell. And he said, not as bad as war. And there's a metal stainless steel shitter there and on the back of the shitter is a drinking fountain and that's the water you're going to have to drink chili well, i got a question for you when you say the water that you have to drink are you talking about the upper part or the lower part water i'm kind of curious you didn't really specify and you know what i thought i thought they used the water in their uh toilet to make hooch or whatever you call it in prison I'm there for maybe two minutes, and the door comes and opens. I'm taken out of that cell, and I'm put in room 23, and I remember thinking it was Michael Jordan's number. One of the largest investors in prisons in America, particular room, doesn't face the sun. It faces another building, so I'm grateful for that. So I take two mattresses, I lay them down, and I lay down, and I try to sleep, but I can't. So I start to do stretches. I'm doing stretches and counts of 30. I do every single kind of stretch I can do. Oh, he's going to be the perfect wife for Bubba. Trying to make himself look good and fit for Bubba. Oh, Bubba's going to love him long, long time. I'm pacing back and forth. I stretch. I do 200, 300 push-ups. I do head handstand push-ups. I do the burpees. I do mountain climbers. I'm doing anything I can. I'm alone for 10 or 11 hours now and no stimulation. They bring food to the door, drop it off, close it. Man, there's just one more thing I want from you. Ooh, that was good, wasn't it? He sounds so depressed. But you know what? He deserves it. He put himself in all this. He got what he wanted. If he didn't do that with the judge, if he was very respectful in the courtroom, he probably wouldn't be sitting there in jail right now. But no, he let his ego get to him. Like all these frauders say, oh, he's on an ego trip. You're a tyrant and all this other BS that they like to spew. But you know what, Chili? Like I said just a couple minutes ago, you got what you deserved. Nobody else did it to you. You did it to yourself. Man up. Do your 180 days. Come out smarter. Probably not going to happen, but come out a little wiser. And learn from your mistakes. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like, 
share, and most importantly, helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Obviously, Captain Happy got a ranch who's a troll. It doesn't only apply for the Second Amendment. It also applies for the First Amendment. I have constitutional carry for this camera. I didn't break the law. I'm not going to be found guilty of anything. This is a waste of time. If you guys want to know who I am, I'll tell you who I am. If you want to know what I'm doing here, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Oh, man. <laughs> I cannot handle this no more. <laughs> this is bull, yo. I can't even take it. Oh, <laughs> man, this is... I can't even handle it no more. So the time has come. Something happened that I never thought would happen, to be quite honest. Could you briefly tell us what the Third Amendment is? That's the walk of shame. You need to remember what you swore to protect. And my voice is terrible today. Please, sir, please don't make me sleep in jail. I'll take it. They're going to make me sleep in jail. Why? Sir, please. Please, dude, please. Oh, my God, don't do that to him. You guys don't know what you're doing to me, man. Why? I'm not sure what you're doing in my life with this, man. Seriously, please.